From Penn State University, ESPN brings you the NCAA Championship Fencing. everybody from Recreation Hall at State College, Pennsylvania. Bob Goldschall and Bruno Santo Nachita bringing you the NCAA Division I fencing finalists. We have some quality competition today. They started with 40 in each weapon. They are down to 24. And Bruno, they are the best fencers from all across the United States on ESPN. No question about that, Bob. I'm looking forward to a tremendous competition for this final round. Uh, what we're going to see today are the three weapons used in modern fencing, the foil, the uh, epee, and the sabre. Uh, and I think all, as, we, as we cover each weapon individually, although we'll notice certain uh, basic fundamental movements used in all three, I think we can look for very distinct differences uh, in style and technique among the three weapons relating to their target area and the means of scoring touches. These fencers have been working hard to get here. They are fencing for themselves as well as for the universities. And this is just how things stand at the moment as far as the colleges and universities go. In first place, Wayne State of Michigan, last year's champions. In second place, MIT. Third place, Cleveland State. In fourth, Penn. In fifth, Princeton. Rounding out the top 10, six, Clemson. Seven, Penn State. Eight, U.S. Naval Academy. Nine, Cornell. And in 10th place, the University of Maryland. Now, we mentioned the fact that the team competition is important, but of course, Bruno, this being an individual sport as well, it's the individual who counts just as much. Absolutely, Bob. I don't think we can ever forget that fencing is an individual sport. And, as, and I'm sure that among the top uh, competitors in this tournament, as much as they know that their success uh, will mean a possible team championship, they realize that every bout that they win today is a step closer to a, a gold medal. Mm -hmm. Well, we have six seeded finalists, and there they are. In first place, it's Andy Bonk. Uh, in second place, Ernie Simon. In third place, Alexander Flom. In fourth place, Carlos Sangini. In fifth place, Mark Moit. Followed by Larry Pastor in sixth place. In seventh, Eric Debus, Joe Wolfson, Mendel Kubik, and Mark Oricchio. Okay, Bruno, we talked about the 24 finalists uh, from the field of 40, and this is the group from all across the United States. The 24 best foil fencers, at least in the year 1980, from uh, the NCAA Division I. And a good geographic spread, too. In terms of an individual basis, Bruno? Andy Bonk. We're looking at Andy Bonk from Notre Dame, who was last year's gold medalist in the foil. Ernie Simon of Wayne State last year placed third uh, in the NCAA foil final. That's Carlos Songini of Cleveland State. Uh, interesting story about Carlo. Last year he was the defending Epe champion. This year he's fencing foil. It's Mark Moyt of Maryland. Larry Pastor of Princeton University. And in sixth place, Alex Flom of George Mason. Okay, you mentioned three weapons is what we're going to be looking at today. The first of those three will be the foil. What do we look for in the foil? Well, in foil, um, we have a light. It's a flexible weapon. Uh, the target area in foil is the front, back, and side of the torso. It's clearly defined by uh, a metallic vest on the fencer. Uh, touches are scored with, with the point and registered electrically on a scoring machine. This is uh, not left to the naked eye, Bruno, is Absolutely it? not. Too uh, fast. A lot of good... Okay, we talked about the fencers. We're going to be coming up with a foil. All of that in just 60 seconds. Individual that we right. ran through. Well, this will be a take. This was. That was nicer. Thanks, Peter. The fencers warm up. We have to.
Andy Bank of Notre Dame. Andy is six feet one, 160 pounds, a marketing major. He will be fencing against Mark Moit from the University of Maryland. And interestingly enough, Bruno Moit was the second best fencer on the Maryland team. The number one guy did not make it here, and the number two sneaks right in. Just shows you the depth on the team. That is Bonk, it is back to you, Moit facing you. It is one nothing in favor of Bonk. It is two nothing in favor of Andy Bonk, who is last year's champion. Boy, Bonk has really gotten off to a quick start. And that is why he's been a champion. Three nothing. Three nothing, just like that. Bonk is a senior from Park Ridge, Illinois. Had an outstanding record during the season, 35 and four. I notice, Bob, that, that Bonk's attacks are all simple and direct. He's just not letting Moit have any time to set up. And it is four nothing, Bruno, and five will win it. Moit having his troubles with Mr. Bonk from Notre Dame. Still 4 nothing in favor of Andy Bonk on the left of Notre Dame. And that is it. So Andy Bonk seems very intent on saving his uh, number one NCAA ranking. And Andy Bunk quickly disposes of Mark Moit. We talked about Bunk's record of 35 and 4 during the season. Moit wasn't exactly bad himself. He was 45 and 8. This is our next bout. On the left is Alexander Flom from George Mason University, which is located in Fairfax, Virginia. On the right, the taller of the two, that's Alexander right there. And his opponent will be Carlo Sangini, who is one of the taller fences here today, Bruno, at six foot three. He is a mechanical engineering major from Cleveland State. But interestingly enough, we have a little international flavor. Flom is from the USSR. Sangini is from Cagliari, Italy. I got it. That is Sangini on the right, who was the winner in the NCAA Epe last year, and now he's fencing foil. Absolutely, Bye, Bruno. Absolutely outstanding Epe fencer, uh, and obviously knows foil well enough to be at this point in the competition. Oh, that is against the right. Sangini is a tough competitor. He's left-handed, he's tall, he's got a lot of reach. It's difficult to oh, get in on. On preparation, the attack to the right is good. The touch Alexander right. Flom right. is called Sasha Ready? by his teammates. He is, as we say, from the USSR. And he uh, has been at George Mason and the United States only since this past June. Sangini, a very aggressive fencer, keeps oh. his opponent off guard. Guard. He has Flom at the back of the strip now. Are you ready? The voice in the background is that of Dan Buchans, who is our director. We'll tell you about Dan when we can. He has quite an interesting background himself. Flom gaining ground. He's recovered to the middle of the strip, which gives him the opportunity to have a second meter warning if that comes about. A nice attack by Flom that time, Bob. Okay, one more, Bruno. Let's see if we can pick up that touch. A nice attack, but just misses, and, and Sangini's point right on target, as you would expect from an Epe fencer. So Sangini leading by a score of 2-1. to one. They mark it touches against. That's we'll right. We'll give it to you in terms of the fencer. In other words, it's two touches against Flom, one against Sangini. Therefore, Sangini is leading. Right, that's right. That, that'll be the easiest way to understand And it. there is Dan Buchans, our director. Four oh. four. Whose voice describing things right now. Dan is a former Olympian. In fact, he was a fencer in four consecutive Olympics, 48, 52, 56, and 60 from New York City, and he fenced, fenced for City College. Are you ready? Director Dan Buchans. Oh! As you're preparing, the attack comes from the right, the touch is against the left. That was an excellent attack.